Thank Hashem. We're able to learn every day. It's because of our learning, we should have to base the Middash immediately. Today we start with Yud Ches 118a at the Mishnah. It says like this, Yishu Shehalcha hi ubailo la Medina Siyam. A woman went on a trip with her husband. He went overseas. Above Amra, she comes back and she says, May Spiley. She says, my husband died. She, she comes back all alone. So Tinase, she's allowed to get married because we said that we trust the woman to say that her husband died. We don't assume that she's lying because she would be much more careful about something like that. The Tito Ksubasa, and not only that, but she even takes her the Ksuba. She gets money. She claims that her husband dies and she gets remarried, takes the Ksuba. However, it's a Rasa Sura. But the, the rival wife is still forbidden to marry. She, there may be a trick over here that she's doing on the rival wife. And for the rival wife, we don't have the, we don't have anyone that's trustworthy that, her, that the husband died. Let's say the rival wife was a Bas Yisrael and the husband they have a common husband, right? The husband is a Kayan. So what happens when they're married? They're able to eat truma. Very good. So Teichel B'Truma. This woman is so married that she can still eat truma. Even though one woman says that her husband died. She's, of course, not eating truma. She's getting married to someone else now. The rival wife is still married and still is eating truma. Divrib Tarfin. That's true. Reb Tarfin holds. Rabbi Akiva, Rabbi Akiva says, you have to be more cautious. Akiva says, you have to be strict in both matters here. She can't get remarried, but we also can't let her eat truma. Okay, next case. Amra meis baili v'achakach meis chami. She tests about her husband that passed away, the wife, and she also tests about, testifies, she testifies about her uh, father-in-law that passed away. So didn't you say, didn't, didn't yeah. you say yesterday that, that by her own testimony, she could um, get herself married, but cannot get the ksuba, not, not get money. Wasn't there something that you said yesterday about that? If because she, was she has coming, no she has no age. If she was coming just for the ksuba, then she can't get the ksuba. And as we had a question about how she presented her case. If she presented her case that she's just wants the ksuba, then it seems like a monetary case. But if it's a direct outcome of of the death of the husband that she's able to get remarried, then and that she's believed about, then she does get the ksuba. Yeah. That's what, okay. that's what it seemed like. It seemed like it had to be what well, we had even in the, the way she presented the case. Yeah, I, yeah, I thought we were saying that if she came and testified, and that was the whole chiddush that Al Piatzmai, we were allowing her that was such a chiddush that she can get married, but that's up to the money. Um, no, that was a machlekas beisol beshamai, but in the end, beshamai. They still agreed to be Shammai. That's what I said. Uh-huh. Okay. okay. I see you listening, Ramesha. <laughs> you can ask the question. Uh, okay. Um, she says now two people passed away, her husband and her father-in-law. They were all on the strip together. So she wants to get remarried, of course, and her mother-in-law could also get remarried, we would assume, right? However, uh, she can get remarried and take the ksuba. However, the mother-in-law cannot get remarried. That was one of the people that they're not believed about each other, was the mother-in-law and the daughter-in-law. They're not believed to testify about, the, uh, about their husbands. Let's say the mother-in-law was a bas to a kayin. Same case, same story. The last case was a tsara was a co-wife, a rival wife. And now it's the mother-in-law, but it's the same story. She's not believed. And let's say the father-in-law is a kaya, which means her husband's a kaya also. 
but the father-in-law is a Kayan, and so the mother-in-law was eating truma the whole time. Uh, that's Tarfin's words. She can still eat truma. Whether Tarfin, Tarfin, I believe, was a Kayan also. Yeah, I'm just trying to, to remember opinions. <laughs> <laughs> it was clearly not a kayak, right? Yes. Uh, and I said, Ben Gayer, I'm just kidding. Rabbi Akiva, I'm a Ainzu Derek Maitia Nidea Veira. Actually, there's really no Siva Sura Milacho Bachumer. Kiva says, No, she can't eat Shuma. She cannot eat Shuma because we have to be more cautious. We have to protect her from sin. Now, we had two cases that were just about the same. Why do we need two of both of these cases? So the Gemara asks us right away. It's Richa. Necessary to say both of these cases. These are around on the bottom of 118. Do It's necessary. If it would only said the first case about the rival wife. Over there, Reptarfan would say that we don't believe her. And she's still allowed to eat Shuma, the, the rival wife, because this woman would be, has such a strong reason to lie, to, to cause harm to the rival wife. We don't believe her at all. It's inside the Gufa. Inside the Gufa over here means that the rival wife is the one that's taking her husband. She's, ste- she's stealing my husband. She really wants to get this woman uh, to suffer, you know? The, the, the rival, the tsara. Abu Khamaisa, but the mother in law, not stealing the husband, tsara, the tsara Mili Dalma. She's just a, a, a pain, a, a nuisance. You know, they, they bicker. So for that, Ema Maitle Rabbi Kiva would say that maybe, you know what? You can't say that she's an absolute liar. Maybe Rabbi Kiva's right that we should be cautious about. Uh, her eating, continuing to eat truma when this woman said that the husband passed away. Right? It's much more of a reason that she'd be an absolute liar when her, uh, when her own relations with her husband is being uh, taken away from her by the rival wife. Um, we just, we're, we're thinking that it's more of a, more of a hatred here, and that would cause her to really be a liar, really. So maybe in that case, we should suspect that uh, in the other case where she's less of a liar, we should suspect, Tarfan would suspect Rabbi Akiva, uh, who's more strict about this. Yeah. Yeah, remember the Gemara Shabbos, the mother-in-law. Um, yeah. Mother in law told the daughters to light a certain uh, candle that was explosive. No, she told it, to, I forget, she told it to put on a certain oil. And then she ended up blowing up the, <laughs> the daughter in law. No, but here we're saying that the rival wife is even worse than the, than the mother in law daughter. Okay. Um, and if we would only say the second case, welcome Rabbi Akiva. That's what Rabbi Akiva says that you have to be strict. We don't know if she's uh, really lying. But in the case where there's a rival wife, then maybe Rabbi Kiva would agree to Reb Tarfan. That you don't have to worry, she's for sure lying. And she can still eat truma, the husband is still alive because she's an absolute liar. Maybe Rabbi Kiva would agree to that. So it's necessary to have both cases. Rabbi Yehuda says in the name of Shmuel, Rabbi is a student of Shmuel, that the halacha is like Reb Tarfin. Um, Rabbi, Rabbi Tarfin, me, that Reb Tarfin, his opinion is, is that regarding the other woman, this wife is an absolute liar. We don't trust anything. Um, Rabbi, Rabbi says, well, we have that in, actually in our Mishnah. Where's the Mishnah? On the next Amish. It says, Nitinli ben b'medina sayam. She claims that she had a child. What would a child do that would affect her getting married to the brother, to the husband's brother? When she claims the husband died, she said, yeah, but I have a child, so I don't have to get. So she says she has a child. However, but my child, the child passed away. 
And then the husband passed away. So she's claiming the husband passed away. We never knew she had a child. So really she has to do Yibam. But she claims that she had a child. But she also claims that the child passed away. Huh? Yibam is the leveret marriage where she marries the husband's brother. Right, if the husband dies. So, Nemenis, we believe her that she had a child. She had the child passed away, and then the husband passed away, and she has to marry the husband's brother. So the child passed away before the husband died. So the husband passed away without children. Let's say she said it the other way. First, the husband passed away, and then the child passed away. That means at the death of the husband, there was a child there which exempts her from Yibam. Ain't an amenis. We don't believe her. We have to suspect that we have to suspect that maybe what she's saying is true. So therefore, she um, what she's saying over here may spin, uh, that she's saying that she really doesn't have to do Yibam. She's exempt from Yibam. Right? And she should be allowed to get married immediately. So the first thing is, is that we tell her, well, okay, you can't do Yibam. However, you also can't get married right away after the Chalitza. So we, we suspect it. We don't believe her, but we suspect enough that she needs Chalitza. The Chalitza is Vlaimus Yabemus. Now the Gemara, or Abaya, is Medayek from the Mishnah. It's only for her that we suspect. But to the words of the rival wife, we don't suspect. The fact that we say, there's a Diyak there that says we only suspect what she claims about herself, but not for anyone else. And um, therefore, we're seeing from this that the rival wife is even allowed to eat truma. Only to her that we suspect, but not to the rival wife. Shema Mina, that's a biased proof that the Mishnah would fit, with the Mishnah itself is paskaning like Rittara. Okay, a new Mishnah on top of 118b. A man marries one of five women. He can't remember which one he married. Oh, this is a party, apparently. Um, if a person's drunk and he gives condition, is it, is it valid? No, he needs to ask, right? He needs to ask. It can't be that he was drunk. He doesn't remember. <laughs> my uh, my um my uh, grandmother was older and she had like these cut assistants. So at a certain point, they all became the same name. They didn't. Uh, <laughs> she couldn't differentiate uh, anyone. So Patricia, you know, uh, now today Selma. It's, oh, it's whatever. <laughs> <laughs> but this is something like that, you know, they're all the same. So, okay. So uh, he doesn't know which one it was. So Kalachas Emeris, Aisi Kiddush. Each one saying, it was me. He probably was probably a wealthy fellow. So each one has, uh, wants to say, you know, I'm the one that you, that you are betrothed to. So nice and get, he has to give each of them a get. If he wants to divorce them, he's allowed to marry them all. It's no problem. They're not related. Not like, it's not like he gave it to sister. That's another command. He gave it to several sisters. He doesn't know which one. That would be a problem. Uh, here, he can marry five wives if he wants. Uh, but if he doesn't want, he has to divorce each of them. Now, that's the problem. How's he going to afford this? What he does is he takes the money of the ksuba, he puts it down in front of them, and he runs. <laughs> He lets them fight it out. Oh. Yeah. So that's Divri Reb Tarfin. That's Reb Tarfin says, Rabbi Kiva, I'm in Zu Derech Maitimi Deaver. You saw this coming. This, this Machlaikas, Rabbi Kiva and Reb Tarfin is following from the last mission. Rabbi Kiva over there says, You're trying to protect from sin, you have to do a better job. Over there, he said that the wife can't eat the truma just in case. Remember? That was the last mission. Now Rabbi Kiva is saying, No, you have to pay each one. Actually, you can get uksuba lachalachas vachas. You got to pay each one. Okay, next case. Gazalacha mechamisha. Person stole from one of five people. Beni do me as a gazal. He doesn't know which one he stole from. 
So, Kalach Raimer, Isi Gazal, each one saying he stole from him. I imagine he walked into an office and he took something, you know, off the desk. So I, I took something from here yesterday. I can't remember which desk I took it from. So, each one saying, yeah, I'm actually missing my whatever. So, Miniach Gazela Beneum Amistalik. He just puts it down in front of them and then he runs away. He says, go fight it out. That's different of Tarfan. Rabbi Kiva remains with Darach. Mitzvah Midei Aver. Rabbi Kiva says, "No, you got to pay each one." Actually, Yishalim Mekolach Advechad until he pays to each one. That's Rabbi Kiva's view. I wonder what American law would say. That's an interesting. Uh... Okay. Interpleading. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So that would be Rib Tarfin's view. Uh-huh. Very interesting. Yeah, what is the problem of being a thief? Is it does that have to do with testimony? Like it would in, in total law, if a person is considered a thief, then he would have uh, uh, you know some some consequences to that. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Right. Right. Uh-huh. Wow. Well, wow. okay. Take a look what's going on over here. We had two cases. One of them seemed innocent. He married a woman he doesn't remember who it is. It seems quite innocent. The other one is he's guilty. I mean, he stole. Right, one of them there was a violation. So, if we're going to be discussing a class, a, a fine that we're putting on a person for doing a, a, a violation, that would make sense more by the Gesel one, where he stole. The Rabbi Kiva says you have to pay everyone. So he says, "Why do I have to pay everyone? I only stole one." So, well, don't steal. You know, it's your fault. So, but when it comes to Kidesh, what are what are you telling him? You're telling him. Uh, he doesn't remember, he doesn't, right? I, I gave it the ring to one of them. I can't remember which one. And now they all have the same ring. <laughs> okay. The Gemara says like this, Kiddush Ketani Baal like Ketani. It doesn't say that he had relations with five women. It just says Kiddush. Well, what would be by Baal wow. if he did have relations? Maybe that would mean, maybe their Reptarfan would be Maida. That you have to give a get and a ksuba to all of them. Maybe. Doesn't say that in the Mishnah, right? So we're implying that it w- could have been worse. It could have been the, the, the Tarfin maybe would have been my uh, uh, Gezel Ktani, it says the second case is stolen. Lakach like Tani. Doesn't say that he bought, could have said, I bought something from one of these people and um, I didn't pay for it. Doesn't say that he has to pay for each of the to all five. Maybe over there, why not? Maybe Rabbi Akiva would be maida that he doesn't. You follow? Maybe Rabbi Akiva is only saying this because of guilt, and Rabbi Tarfin is only saying this because of innocence. But maybe in, in opposite cases, they would be maida. Says Mani Masnisin, who's the author of our Mishnah? Because apparently we have another source that says that Rabbi Akiva and Rabbi Tarfin only say their din in specific cases. It goes like this. It's not the Tanakam, it's not Rav Shimon ben Elazar. The Tani was taught in a Brisa. Okay, now we're going to see that Rav Shimon ben Elazar, Rav Shimon ben Elazar was a student of Rav Meir. Um, he is, he's of the opinion, we'll take a look. He says, the Tani Rav Shimon ben Elazar, Reimer, le'nechleku Rav Tarfin Rav Yekiv al she'kidash achas mecha mishnashim, v'ni yedei as a kidash m'ni achaksub b'nei m'nestali. Everyone agrees that if this, this was absolutely innocent, he gave money or a ring to five women, to one of five women, and he doesn't remember which one, that even Rabbi Kiba would say that when he gives the divorces to the five women, he just puts down uh, one ksuba in a bag, <laughs> one bag of money, 200 uh, zuz, right? And he walks away. Then what is the machlekes? He had relations with one of them. Well, over there... Over there, Reptarfin Aimer, 
Minach Ksub Benim Mistalak, Rabbi Kiva, Oimer Achi Shal Mechalachas Rachas. Here it's a little bit worse. Now, the truth is, why is this worse? Why is there guilt to be here? Yeah. Yeah. Um, he doesn't remember. This is already, Rashi puts it as that he did a Maisa, the Gina Isa, the Kedushi Bia. Oh, the problem is, the problem is, is that he married her with the, the betrothal was with relations. That is not an appropriate betrothal, right? That's the problem. That's that's the problem. So over there, there was already a, a little bit of a crime, and that's why Rabbi Akiva says he has to pay to all five. Uh, what's the next case? And also, they're not arguing about if he bought a, he made a purchase from one of them, and he doesn't know which one it was, and he has to pay. Yeah, but you're not you're supposed to. There was a problem with being the drugs regulations. Ra, even though it's acceptable, but Ra um, gave Malkus to someone that did that. Rav Mangin Alman the Makadish Bibia, he said that was not a, a modest way of being betrothed. Wouldn't it be a fast marriage? Yeah, yeah, it would work. It works. It's fully married to this. Uh, oh, no, it's not. It's actually not fully married because he's not moving it. She's not moving into his house. She's still uh, staying at her father's house for the year. Uh, until Wednesday. So, she may have to make mekach when he was talak. Lay nechlek well. She goes only chamisha. The the machlekes is only if he stole from one of five. Shamar abtar from nech gzeil when he was talak. Rabbi Kiva and Rishi Shalom gzeil chol echad vechad. So, in other words, according to Rishon Metal Lazer, Rabbi Akiva's view is only if there's guilt. That's when you have to pay to each one. But if there's no guilt, everyone agrees that you just put it down and you walk away. Don't argue by these innocent cases of just the betrothal and of a purchase. Then obviously the Tanakama holds that they, their Tanakama is the first opinion. Sometimes the Gemara will tell us a, a name. Uh, let's say in this case, Rabbi Shimon Ben-Alazar says that Machlaikas between Rabbi Kippur and Tarfin is only about a certain case. Now, you told me Rav Shem ben Elazar says that. What is the other opinion hold? So when we talk about the other opinion, we just call them the Tanakama, the first opinion. You know, Rav Shem ben Elazar is the dissenting view. What does the other view hold? So that's the title, Tanakam. Tana means the, um, the teacher, and Kama means first. So Tanakama, the first view. Like Baba Kama means the first gate. Yeah, yeah. Baba is an entrance. No, there's three gates. <laughs> in Baba Kama, Baba Mitzila, last year, this, uh, one of the track dates that was divided into two. Okay, so Kama means first. So the, what does the Tanakama hold? The Tanakama says that they argue even in the case where there's absolute innocence. It's not going to be, oh, you know, you find that, look, find your mayor on the Rabbi Akiva. Yeah, then look on the Rabbi Akiva. Yeah. So now the problem is money. So then who is our Mishnah? Itanakama, if it's a Tanakama listening, Kiddish Balaka. Why does it say betrothal and stealing? It should have said betrothal and purchase. Because that's the view of the Tanakama. The, uh, Rabbi Kiva argues even when there's no guilt. He Rabshim bin Alazar, where he only argues with guilt, listening Bal Bagazal then only give us the case of guilt, which is when he had relations with one of them and he stole. <clears throat> really, our Mishnah is Rupshim ben Elazar. Well, why did it say Kiddush? My Kiddush, what does it mean Kiddush? Kiddush Padilla. He married her with relations. Aha, uh -huh. it didn't, tell, it didn't uh, spell that out. But that's what the Gemara is saying, is what really happened. Tana Kiddush. Oh, so why did it say Kiddush? Why did it start like this? 
even though it's only a rabbinic prohibition to have a betrothal with relations, that's not a biblical uh, prohibition. And nevertheless, Rabbi Akiva says that if you want to, a person needs to get out of that guilt, he has to pay each one of them the ksuba. That applies even with a rabbinic prohibition. What did he do wrong? He married one of them with relations instead of with the ring. It was betrothed. I should have used money. Yeah. Nevertheless, they just need to shove a fruit down. A ring it doesn't it just be it doesn't have to be a ring. It could be just a coin. We use a ring. And Tanagazal Tarfan, and it's telling us about stealing to tell us the the um, the strength of Tarfan. Afagav Bisur the Raisa of it, even though he stole, that's a biblical prohibition. But nevertheless, Tarfan holds that in order to get out of that guilt, he just has to put the money down in front of the five people and let them figure it out. And he's still considered that he's absolved himself from the, uh, from the stealing. Like Hannes, he doesn't make that fine. Okay, the next Mishnah. Yeah. I forget how they evaluate a shabbat Maybe what can buy, like a barley or a grain or something, a small amount. No. It was a small amount of silver, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but the reason why we use just a simple band, you know, say uh, any jewelry in it, because she may have the intention that, oh my gosh, he's giving me such an expensive diamond. I'm, I'm marrying him for sure, you know, like, and she's agreeing because of the value of the, then she finds out that it was uh, zirconium or whatever, what's it called? The, uh, thing. And it wasn't, it was fake. So then there would be a whole problem. With, so we, we don't use anything that could be uh, uh, evaluated, anything that could be counterfeit. So you look at the band and uh, the band is just, a, you know, just a plain metal, uh, yeah. silver or you know, <laughs> gold. But it's plain without any jewelry. Yeah, yeah they probably what they're doing there is just to see that it's not plastic. Yeah. Right. Yeah. What would happen if they if uh, they actually used the ring at a wedding with the uh, with the with the diamond in it, with the, with the, the, the gem on it. I assume it would be a, a marriage, uh, assuming it, especially if it wasn't counterfeit. <laughs> okay, wow. I have to ask a rabbi. A woman that goes with her husband overseas on a trip. And they have a child that's traveling with them. Okay. Okay. Amra Mace she comes back, she returns from the trip. She says, her husband passed away. And she says, and then my uh, son passed away. That's what she says. You have to think about it like this. When she left, what was the assumed position that she had regarding her brother-in-law? Would she be required to marry the brother-in-law if the husband died? The answer is no, because she had a child. She had a child. Even if the husband died, she wouldn't have. Now she's returning. She's saying the husband died and the child died after the husband. So she's back in her same assumed position as when she left. So we're gonna accept her statement that her husband died. We'll also accept her statement that the son died afterwards because she's not changing her assumed status. We call that the chazaka. We're not changing her chazaka. And so she's believed. We only, usually the belief of a woman is only that her husband died. To start to change other things about this, other beliefs that we don't uh, usually do, especially if it's changing her status. Well, huh? so the only one type of testimony that she's believed for. Yeah, that's the, the, the we want, we don't want it to be an aguna, to be left alone. We want it to be able to get married. So we trust her just for that. Let's say she does it differently. Let's say, let's say she says, first, the son passed away. She's changing her status. 
then the husband passed away. So in the menace, we don't believe her. However, we do suspect to her words, she has to do halita before she gets married to someone else. She can't do yibam. What are we, what is, what are we uh, uh, suspicious of? We think maybe she's uh, in love with her uh, brother-in-law. Her, her, her husband's brother. Maybe she's lying here. Maybe. I mean, there's, there's that possibility that she's lying. And she's changing her status. Because when she left, she was prohibited to the brother-in-law. And now she's claiming that the child passed away. We can't, we don't trust her in that area. We trust it to say the husband died. But to change her status about the, the brother-in-law, we don't trust 100%. We suspect to it, so she has to do halitza. Nitin li ben Medina sayam. Interesting case. She left, she didn't have any child. And so therefore, what was her status to, regarding her brother-in-law? That if her husband would pass away, she would have to marry her husband's brother. Okay. She claims that she had a child on the, on the journey, on the trip. Ramra, but she says, but the child passed away. And then the husband passed away. Well, that's the case. She's back to original status where she's obligated to do yibam. So therefore we believe her. She didn't change her status. Let's say she says, um, let's say she says, that she had a child that passed away after the husband passed away. Two points. First of all, she had a child. Second of all, the child passed away after the husband. She's changing her status regarding the brother-in-law. So we say, We don't let her do, um, we don't let her just get married without Chalitza because she's claiming that she had a child. She has to do Chalitza. Okay, is something we didn't think about. She uh, apparently went on the journey together with her mother-in-law. Or with her father-in-law. That's okay. With the father-in-law as well. That would work. It doesn't have to be the mother. It could be just the father-in-law. And what happened over there? The father-in-law, who did not have any other children, he only had one child, which is her husband. But when he went over there, he had one more child. He married someone, he had children, he had a child over there. And now she comes back. Amra. She says her husband died. And the Yavam, that child, also died. That child died. And then, and then the husband died. It actually doesn't matter because if there's no sibling. Then who is she to do Yibama? So she's not meant, she's believed, because when she left, there are also no siblings. Now there's no siblings also. So she's not changing anything. Let's say she went with the Yavam on the journey, that there is a sibling to the husband. Says her husband passed away and the Yavam passed away. Yavami Baili, the Yavam and then the husband. Ain't an amenus. She's not believed about this. The yavam. A woman isn't believed to say that the that the yavam passed away, and she wants to marry him right away without doing chalitza. She's also not believed. Look at this. A woman can't say regarding. Her sister that's married, she can't say that her sister passed away. Let's say two sisters went on a trip. One of them is married to so and so, some guy. Anyway, uh, only the non married sister comes back. The guy says, Where's uh, my wife? Says, oh, she died over there on the journey. But uh, I'm available to get married to him. Now, she's allowed to marry this fellow if the sister's not alive. But the only thing is, we don't trust her. <laughs> we don't trust her we don't trust her because we only trust her to testify about her own husband that he died not about anything else uh, and a man is not believed to say that his brother passed away because he wants to marry the brother's wife he also can't testify that his wife passed away because he wants to marry her sister we have to have that testimony from other people. 
Boimine Rabba Mirab Nachman. Rabba asked Rab Nachman a question. It's a very important uh, piece over here, very important Gemara. You see, normally, normally, when a man gives a woman a get, uh, it's not to her benefit. Uh, is it to her benefit? It's not to her benefit to be divorced. She would rather be married. So you have to owe it. anything that's to her detriment has to be done directly to her. And not, and not done in an assumed way that, oh, she would probably want this anyway because it's her detriment. Like, let's say you were giving someone a gift. So you could tell, uh, I could say, uh, here, Rav Naftali, here's a gift, acquire it for uh, the professor. So, and it, there's only a benefit to it. You can acquire, well, he's acquired it already. You acquired it on his behalf. But if it's a, to his detriment, I can't say acquire this uh, debt you know, that, that he's now going to, it was what, he never agreed to that. But if it's, a, it's called, you can do something to the benefit, even if the person not there, but you can't cause a, uh, any detriment to him if he's not there. So now, let's say this fellow maybe is afraid he's going to pass away. He doesn't want his wife to have to end up marrying his brother. So his wife isn't here right now. So he gives a get to an individual and he says, acquire this on behalf of my wife. Is that considered something positive? Is that a zachin ladam? She doesn't now, she, now she's exempt from marrying the, the yavam. Or is that chavin ladam? Okay, very important question. Kivan the sanyale is chosula. Well, since she hates the brother-in-law, so this is a Maybe it's possible that she likes the brother. You can't cause anything to the detriment without her here. She would have to agree to that. You know what? This is, uh, who's, at, who's answering this? Rav Nachman is telling Rava, we actually have this doubt exactly in our Mishnah because it says, in our Mishnah we had, we suspect to her words, we said it twice. Once when she has to do Yibam and once when she doesn't have to do Yibam. We suspect the both now. We have two cases. So the Mishnah also understands that that's a doubt. Amale Ravina Rava. Now Ravina asks Rava a question. Let's say someone gives a get to another fellow and he says, acquire this on behalf of my wife. Now they happen to be in a quarrel, him and his wife. They're, 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 they're fighting. So keeping this like is is that we consider that a merit for the wife. She's got to want to get out of this marriage, right? They're fighting. How do you read this? What's the halach? Even though she's fighting, but she still wants to stay married. That doesn't mean that she wants to be divorced. It's worse. Sometimes, sometimes, sometimes it's worse to be divorced than to be in a in a bad marriage. Yeah, Tashma, come in here. Yeah, you ready? The Amar Rish Lakis. Rish Lakis says, "Tav lemesav tan tan du milamesav armlo." It's better to be two people together than to be uh, all alone. Yeah, the wife would definitely want to be married. Um, Unless, of course, it's uh, abusive, you know, some sort of, uh, some sort of abuse. That's possible. <laughs> Abaya Amar, Abaya says, who said that? The first one was Rish Lakish. Abaya says, the Shum Shemana Gavra. This means even if he is a, as small as an ant, the husband. But Kursi Becharta Ramala, she still puts her hands amongst the noble woman, her, her chair. She puts her chair amongst the, the noble woman, that means that even with the lousy husband, but she still feels a status of a married woman. And she's still, a married woman has more of a status, at least, it's, you know, I think in our society also. Though. Definitely in the from world. No, a married woman has a certain status. She's a rebbitzin. 
Um, even if the husband is a wool comber, that's apparently a, a low sort of business, a uh, low trade. Tikre, she calls out the safe bava of a at the entrance. Bava is bava is the doorway. Remember, we said bava, it's the entranceway. At the uh, end, of, at the edge of the house, she says to her husband to come sit with her. It's, she's still happy to have any husband. Ravashi Yomer de Kulsi Gavra. This means there's two interpretations, there's several interpretations. Uh, one is, um, comes from a, a family that's uh, uh, Ill, of Ill repute. Or another one is that he sells cabbages. That means that he doesn't have much skill. Let's see, just does the basic, uh, uh, yeah, it's a, a low job. She doesn't ask for um, lentils for her, for her pot. She doesn't ask for anything. She's happy just to be married. All of them can commit adultery. They have a child, they say, oh, it's from my husband. So there's a little comment in here. That first, we thought that, the, that what was the benefit of being married? Well, it still gives them a certain status. But there is another benefit also, that if they commit adultery, they're not automatically uh, guilty, right? The, uh, what's that called? It's the scarlet uh, letter. <laughs> But automatically guilty, they say, yeah, uh, uh, it's the husband. No, it's not, there's no shame uh, immediately. Right. 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 But whatever the case is, definitely we can't do it. We can't give a get when the woman is. Uh, when the woman is not actually receiving it. You know what we, we, what we will do in the, in the best thing is if a woman refuses to, to accept the gap. She, no, if she actually refuses to get, accept the gap, then this would be problematic. But if the woman is not reachable, she's not uh, religious, she doesn't return uh, the calls, moved away, we can't find her. And the husband wants to get married and today. He needs to divorce his first wife to marry a second wife. Could be they're civilly divorced, you know, but he just never gave a gift. Hasn't seen, seen her in 10 years. So if we know that she's remarried, we'll appoint an agent on her behalf to accept the gift from Because we'll assume at the point that she's already living with someone else, it's only to her benefit to get the gift. There's no detriment there. Follow, so it is to her benefit. There, we, that's a scenario where we're one hundred percent clear that it would be to her benefit to have a divorce. She remarried, she remarried civilly to someone else. Well, we, we, if she outright says she doesn't want to take the gift, then it's problematic to make up that it still is close and we're going to do. It. But, but if she didn't actually say that, we just can't contact her. Can't find her. So we'll assume an assumption is that it's a it's a it's a suchus for her to have the get, not a chayim. Okay, let's start the uh, the next part. Beisha shalach b'ayla b'tzeras l'medina a woman that went with her husband and the rival wife. No, no, she didn't go with her wife. Her husband and the rival wife went on a journey. They left her at home to babysit. Um, there's actually no uh, in this case there's no one in the house there's no children yet because it's a case of people so for whatever reason they just have free tickets for two people she gets she gets left at home so above Amrila Mays witnesses came and said that the husband passed away she can't get remarried yet why not she may have to do Yiba well, um, so let her do Yiba. Well, there's a problem. I should take the witnesses. Yeah, yeah. I should take the Shemamu Beres Hitzarasa. 
there's a possibility that maybe the rival wife is pregnant. And if the rival wife has a baby, then she's going to be exempt from Yibam because the, uh, the, the husband had passed away with the offspring. She had a, a mother-in-law that's still alive. We don't suspect that maybe the mother-in-law had a child and therefore the husband has a sibling. We don't suspect that. Yatsis Malaya. Let's say the mother-in-law left um, pregnant. Then we do suspect that maybe there was a child that was born and she has a sibling and she can't do... Uh, the brother has a sibling. Not the brother. The husband has a brother sibling. Um, and therefore she has to wait for Yibam or Chalitza. Rabbi Shua Imerin Cheshesh. Rabbi Shua says, no, 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 no. Just because she's pregnant, that does not mean that she had a baby. Could be she had a miscarriage. And even if she did have a baby, how do you know that the baby was born? You know, but what's happening here is not her child or the Tsar's child. We're talking about the husband, mother, having a, 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 a only a brother would cause that she would need to do Yibam. Not a sister, not if the husband has a sister, that doesn't, that's meaningless. Right? So when it came to her having the child or her co-wife having the child, it could have been either a son or, or a daughter. When it comes to the husband's mother having a child, that can only be a brother. So the bad man, not spicy. The Gemara said, the, the Mishnah said that Shema um, Muveris He Tarasa. Maybe she, the, the, the rival wife, had a, uh, had a, is pregnant. Hakamash Malan. This is coming to teach us. We only suspect that maybe the wife that the husband had already is pregnant. But we don't suspect that he married some other woman that we don't know of. And that one also had a, uh, this is, it's, it's impossible to know if he had a child from someone that he wasn't, that wasn't, uh, we didn't know about was even married to. That we don't suspect. So late in late to see Abed. Let's leave this for, uh, for tomorrow. Actually, right, right, right. It's only the wives that we would know about that we would be suspecting. Them. Let's. Uh, let, can, can we want to learn this evening at seven twenty? Yeah, let's try, and that way we'll, we're, we're still about a page uh, behind. Uh,